Hello, this is Chikudum. Welcome to Stand Year 4. Today, we are hitting verse 15 of our text from Ephesians 6 from verse 10. And we are on the sixth episode of this series. We are trying to discover and discuss things that we might have ignored when we are standing, believing God to receive a miracle. People say to me, Pastor, I've done this, I've done that, and I've done all, and yet I have not yet seen those things I believe God for. I have not yet received my miracle. That's why I'm running this series. And there are some things we might have overlooked. There are some things that we need to focus on, and I trust by the end of this episode, we'll be armed with all that we require to stand and stand there for until we have that which you trust God for, that which you believe God for. So I'm going to see you on the other side as we discuss shodding our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Welcome back. Verse 15 of Ephesians chapter 6 says, Having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We all know about the gospel of peace is talking about soul winning. It's talking about going out there and telling somebody about Christ. It's talking about our lives preaching the gospel. What I want us to focus on from this verse is preparation. That word preparation. Having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The word preparation talks about readiness. How ready are we to share the gospel with friends and family? How ready are we to share the gospel with people we come across, either in public transportation or as we go about our daily business at work, in our business premises or wherever? How ready are you to share the gospel to somebody? A soldier's gear is fitted with a lot of things. The last episode we looked at the breastplate of righteousness. The modern breastplate is what they call body armor, bulletproof, that stops the bullet from entering those vital organs. But there's something we tend to overlook. It's the boots. It's the boots that the military man, the soldier wears. In modern day warfare, the boots has so advanced, technology has so advanced, that they've made that boot to be able to survive as much terrain as possible, as many terrains as possible. Some of those boots can survive heavy snow, desert treks, forest or jungle setting, even water. Because we have paratroopers, we have marine soldiers and the seals, all those Navy, Navy seals. The boots have technologically evolved over the years because they found out that the boots are so important for the soldier to be able to carry out combats or carry out his, um, his functions or her function. And we tend to overlook that. But you see in this place in Ephesians chapter 6 that Paul did not overlook that. It is so, so important to the soldier's gear. And that behoves us to really talk about this. Why was sharing the gospel associated with the boots, the gear you wear on your feet? Because a soldier is supposed to be mobile. It conveys that um, the gospel should be something every believer does as he goes or as she goes about her daily activity. Very important. No matter what you are involved in, be ready to share Christ with somebody. What that tells us is that we need to walk so winning into our lifestyle. And I've made this discovery over time that a lot of Christians, when they move from the society where they are known as Christians to a different location where they are not known as Christians, they tend to not identify themselves as Christians. And it reminds me of what some policemen do, you know, in our nation. Whenever they are going about a duty and they hear of a robbery attack or some civil um, unrest that is dangerous, 
the first thing they usually do is that they remove their uniform so they can blend with civilians. They believe when they do that, they will not be the first target of those people. And I usually associate that action from the policemen to these Christians that run away from being identified as a Christian. What really happens really is that they blend with society and before you know it, they become like that society. They become like the world. The Bible says, though we are in the world, but we are not of the world. A lot of Christians do that. When they are transferred from their town to another town where they are not known, they seize every Christian activity. They blend with the world. And usually what happens is that the world overruns them. And that is the truth. Yeah. Once you don't identify yourself as a Christian in a new community, that community will swallow you. And it happens a lot. And what they don't know is that they have pulled out one of their gears as a soldier they're supposed to wear to be able to withstand the wiles of the enemy. It's so important that you don't joke with your identity as a Christian. Do you know why I say that? Say, so live your life prepared to showcase the nature and the character of Christ to the people. People watching, you might not know. People observe you, you might not know. And what they observe forms a perception about you. So every Christian should know this for a fact. When they comport themselves, when they live out who they are supposed to be, when they don't compromise their faith, when they speak appropriately as a Christian ought to speak, they are actually sharing Christ with people. And people in their curious nature will want to know why this person is different from them and that will stir up curiosity that might eventually lead them to come ask you about it and that gives you an opportunity to share Christ. True Christianity should be seen. Whenever your Christianity is not seen, then we need to check your Christianity. Gone are the days where you meet a man, you meet a woman, you could tell that he, she is a Christian. Those days have gone by because we are not prepared to communicate Christ through our conduct, through our conversation. You know, the Bible talks about conversation a whole lot in the Bible. Talking about the man that married a believing woman, Peter writing, said to her, See, you don't even need to bother speaking to your husband about Christ, but be humble, be submissive, and let your chaste conversation win him to Christ. So you can win somebody to Christ without your speaking to that person. That is awesome. That is how you shod your feet with the preparedness of the gospel of peace. And when you do that, the Bible says there is a crown of rejoicing that awaits those that will do that. Even before we get to that award ceremony in heaven, Jesus said something. Now, when you share and tell others about me, I will share and tell the angels about you. He said, I will confess you to my father. I will confess you to angels. Now, see how this is an armor to withstand the enemy. How this is an armor to get your miracles. When Christ shares you and confesses you to the angels, the angels that have been posted or are on deployment here on earth who want to come meet you. What will not happen is that you have access to more angels, stronger angels. You have them at your disposal. So whenever you are faced with a challenge, whenever you trust God for something, these angels will walk swiftly behind the scenes to bring your miracles to you. Remember, God has done it all. God has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. But how do you convert those heavenly blessings to material and natural blessings? Very easy. You stand in God in faith. You ask. And guess what? Because God will bring those things to you through men. These angels get deployed to work on men 
together to bring your miracles to you. Wow. Isn't that awesome? So I want you to arm yourself as you expect to receive from God with the preparedness to share the gospel of peace through your conduct and through your conversation. And you know what? Your miracle will find you before you know it. In the next episode, episode 7, we'll be looking at that helmet of salvation. Don't miss that episode. We're going to be looking at the connection of the soul of man and the brain and why Paul said the helmet of salvation is important for you to stand there for. See you at the next one. God bless you. Bye.